Providence, enjoying retirement, uh, busy uh, doing things like this because I've been around so long, I'm kind of a known entity. So um, I'm happy to be here uh, with you. I believe very strongly in what Srik does, and I love the newsletters. Thank you, Anna, and whoever else puts those out. Thank you very much. Am I on now? Or are you doing something? Yes, else? No, go ahead. I was going to say, but you're also infamous. You're famous, but you're infamous. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, whatever. Yeah. Um, go ahead, I'm, Jane Ann. Yeah. I'm, I'm, work, I'm uh, here to talk a little bit about Cops Metro. And I, I think that you probably know some things about Cops Metro, but I'm going to give you a little history to refresh your memories just a bit because it kind of sets the tone for. Um, for what COPS Metro does, is and does. You know, it, it uh, in next year, in, uh, I'm gonna give you the date now, October 27th of 2024, we will celebrate our 50th anniversary of the mm. founding of COPS Metro. And it all started with the Jesuit Father Edmundo Rodriguez, who was at, at the, he's a Jesuit, was a Jesuit. And he was at, um, our Lady of Guadalupe in San Antonio, and became aware of the of the of the terrible things that happened in San Antonio in those days, when they got we got a lot of rain and the streets were not paved. There were no drainage. Drainage was at a premium. Um, uh, children, there were no sidewalks. Children slogged through mud and water and. Um, to get to school and and it was it was a terrible terrible situation simultaneously almost with his becoming aware of this and really looking at it a fellow by the name of um, Andy Saravia also uh, was aware and he was aware that monies that were really dedicated for work on the west side got diverted to other parts of the city and almost simultaneously with, with uh, Andy, Andres uh, Saravia, was uh, Beatriz Gallegos. She also, um, uh, they, they didn't know each other, but they connected. Providence brought them together and they began to um, talk about uh, what was going on and wondered, you know, what they could do to make a difference. And... Um, at that time, in up in uh, Chicago, um, a fellow by the name of uh, Ernie Cortez was was being uh, groomed into the Industrial Areas Foundation, which uh, used the the uh, the book by, um, of course, I can't think of his name anyway. Um, what is you know who I'm talking about? Rules Sol for Sololinsky. 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 Thank you. He's been, he was dubbed a. Uh, communist, but um, and and all that was happening, and and parishes. These these people were good Catholics. So Our Lady of Guadalupe and the and um, uh, the parishes that Beatriz and Andres Saravia belonged to on the west side began to realize that that um, you know they they had they had potential leadership, but didn't see themselves in that capacity. And the Good Government League in San Antonio was ruling, and there was no way funds were going to be divert, to, taken away from um, where they were were designated by this government structure. Um, and so the three of them, they, they Ernie Cortez was brought in, and Ernie and leaders leadership um, people had been developing leaders in, in San Antonio here, one here, one there, but it was a one person deal. And Ernie's um, creativity and his his bright, wonderful idea was to organize churches, to organize already collected groups. So the parishes on the west side, deep in the west side, Our Lady of Guadalupe, San Alfonso, St. Timothy's, um, uh, those, those uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary, uh, not Immaculate Heart of Mary, Immaculate Conception. Uh, anyway, there were eight churches or so, and 
they begin to organize. And what they were really doing was what the Senate is doing now is listening to people's stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They simply went in and listened to stories. And they discovered that there, that there was a common theme of what was not happening in San Antonio with respect to drainage, lights, sidewalks, you know, all of those things, attic libraries, basic, basic, basic needs, um, sewerage, um, you know, it was, it was just a, a terrible uh, situation. And actually the work, the Industrial Areas Foundation provided Ernie Cortez, the, the parishes contributed to uh, what it cost for him to organize and he ran a, a really tight ship, kind of a, a, a really a driven man. And uh, those those organizers that were, people who worked with him really worked hard. However, the beginning really of the of the whole uh, situ the whole organization called the Industrial Areas Foundations uh, and Ed Chambers and the men who were and they were all men who were uh, in charge of it in those days. Really, Cops Metro was the, the key flagship, and it is still seen as the beginning of, of mm -hmm. organizing the way they organized. So, um, you know, the church, it, it, it's been, it's, it's, they, they, uh, in the process of listening to people, and this is happening in the synod process as well, they, they saw people who would step up and say, well, let's get together at my house and let's let's plan on uh, doing something about this. Let's, you know, let's uh, let's let's write letters to the to the city council or let's go to city council. So they began to to recognize leaders, that and and uh, they they believe that really leaders are anyone who can, or we believe, anyone who can deliver a group of followers, you know, to for something or and also can can uh, uh, provide the money to do something. So leaders can also be people who are who can provide money. And that's those are the two definitions of, of leaders that um, IAF uses. Currently, there are uh, organizations, IAF organizations all over the world. Um, Ireland, England, um, uh, Canada, here in the United States. I can't tell you all the places. <clears throat> but the process of cultivating leaders who can deliver followers to make something happen, to coalesce power, and we think of power as a bad word, but it's not a bad word. This is power to do something good. Poder the Spanish word, uh, to make something happen, not power over uh, tyrannical power, or it's not the same as authority. Power rests in the group. Authority rests in a position. And um, we don't want to get those two confused. So Cops Metro over the years has, you know, ebbed and, and uh, swelled and ebbed and swelled. And it's, we're in a growing, um, uh, position now really bringing in uh, new leaders. It was in the, about the um, 80s that Metro Alliances, I think that's about it, right, Veronica? About in the 80s that uh, Metro Alliance, which was East Side, was brought in and they became one unit a uh, while, while back. And there is another group called ICANN, which is a coordinating committee and it is uh, still another group that is probably um, will keep its name but will but will function with cups metro so we're we're uh, reaching out to parishes we had i just want to give you a good a good um, good report of last week uh, two weeks ago we had a meeting of at oblate actually at oblate in the uh, renewal center uh, we had 87, um, pardon me, we had, not at, not at Oblate, but we had 87 leaders, uh, new leaders that a lot of them were new from various churches, a number of Protestant churches, 
we Macedonia Baptist Church, Lutheran churches, Presbyterian, um, Episcopalian, um, Catholic, of course, um, and and um, we also had a, a, a group of clergy and religious leaders at Oblate, and there were fifty uh, re religious leaders at those. So uh, we we identify always by group. Cops doesn't have any individual members. It's always an organization to which a person belongs. And we always identify the organization um, to which we, uh, which we belong to. So uh, <clears throat> we're, we're in the process now of preparing for our 50th anniversary. And as I said, it's gonna be October 27th, 2024 at the convention center. And we'll be there, it will be attended by community leaders, religious leaders, other organizations of, in the IAF. Um, so it's um, it's a it's an organization that that is aimed at coalescing power for good. That's really uh, what we're about. And training the leaders, preparing them, recognizing and and simply helping them to recognize themselves and to help them uh, have the um, the the uh, confidence to 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 stand up and and speak truth to power. <clears throat> we have a number of issues that we're working on now. One of which is um, gun violence. Um, <clears throat> just yesterday, we had a meeting with um, uh, Councilman. Um, oh my goodness, my my brain doesn't work all the time really well. Anyway, he's a young woman. I know. I saw her on TV it last night. It wasn't a woman. It wasn't. It was a guy. Oh, it, oh, okay, all right, I, uh, okay. He's out in 10, uh, I'll think of his name, John Courage, John Courage, sorry. And it was his invitation and also one of the leaders, a fellow who's at Divine Redeemer um, Lutheran Church on the, on, pardon me, Pres Presbyterian Church on the West side. He's been here for 30 years. Um, he, he has uh, been uh, doing one initiative is to provide lock boxes for for uh, working with the city um city the the mayor with um sheriff and also uh the um police chief to provide lock boxes that can be installed uh, under the seat of a car that that handguns can be put into and secured about 50% of the handguns that are used in this on the street are stolen from from cars because people simply put them under the seat and and don't lock the car or if they lock the car then the people break in and steal it um so uh if at least it it will prevent an easy access to the theft of handguns second thing that um rob is doing the pastor is um rob mueller is uh, doing a, a t-shirt thing that there are 2,600 individuals from San Antonio have been killed or either by murder or by suicide in San Antonio over the last five years. So the idea is to, uh, in the case of murder, to put the name of the person, the date of the death, uh, the, maybe the person's age, uh, and then display those at churches. And so the church would, would um, the funds are being raised for that. And the church would uh, simply put the name on the t-shirt and then um, put up, have, a, he's got a method figured out for displaying those at the church. And then on a single day, they will be displayed at the Alamo Dome, all 2,600 of them, if we can. Suicides, there will no not be a name. It will all, uh, it will be um, simply a, a, like a line or an X or something, the date of death. And then, um, you know, it's, it's still death by a gun. The next thing that uh, Courage is doing is, is having a day on which anonymous, not anonymously, but no questions asked, guns can be that people do not want 
or are in their home and they simply are there and they don't, uh, they simply don't want the gun anymore, um, can bring it to the Alamo Dome, probably the same day those shirts will be displayed and turn those in and get a, 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 a gift card from HEB that will be purchased, not donated for the approximate value of the gun could be anywhere from 200 to 500 dollars so the person would get that um recompense for um for turning in the gun and the guns will either be um they will be, be checked to see if they're stolen and if they're stolen they'll be just and and see if they were used in a in a in a murder or in a in a uh, crime and if so, they will be detained for evidence, uh, you know, if possibly. Uh, if, they're, if they were simply, um, you know, if they just, there's no, if we don't have any information on it, they will be destroyed. Eventually, uh, after any uh, evidence could would be uh, needed for a trial, then after that, the guns would be destroyed. And if they were, Stolen, they will notify if they can get, if there's still uh, information on the gun, they will notify the owner. And if he or she uh, wants the gun, they will return it. Um, I mean, they're not gonna keep something that's, uh, so this is, this is gonna be handled very, very, um, with no questions asked. Uh, people who bring them in don't have to worry about being well, you, this person brought the gun and you could be prosecuted for stealing it or whatever. Um, second thing we're working on is housing. Second issue we're working on and uh, trying to get money from the city council to provide maintenance for some of our public housing. Uh, we know from two young women who live in Cassiana Homes, the wretched, wretched, wretched conditions in which they live. Sometimes uh, sewerage drips into their, from pipes, drips into their uh, facility, their home, leaks in the ceiling, um, air conditioning doesn't work adequately. And we've just, um, we did a call yesterday to city council to get 3.5 million on the, on the uh, budget to do some maintenance on particularly Cassiana homes. So, um, that's another thing. We're also we also uh, lobby uh, with the city of San Antonio with, when the when the previous bond from from five years ago when that was it's finally being funded now to get money for owner occupied repair of houses, and um, we were successful in doing that. And uh, so that's another issue that we continue to work on. Third thing, and I'm really I'm really involved in this is San Antonio Ready to Work. As you know, um, in or probably remember in November of 2000, 2020, I mean, um, the city voted 77 percent in favor of um, funding the one eighth of the city sales taxes for uh, training on the job for training for jobs and the idea was there was this is not a new tax this was was not a new tax this was uh, money that was already uh, collected uh, in in and available over four and a half years it doesn't have to be spent in four and a half years but but it is there and we are on the city's case all the time, almost weekly, if not more often, the mayor, city manager, the people who, who run the process to, to model it, to model it, not, not send more money to Project Quest, it's at capacity, but to model it on the process. Project Quest, which was started um, 35 years ago when the Levi Strauss and, and Kelly Fields were closing, to provide uh, training for the workers who lost their jobs. Really, that was the focus. It, it took two years to get it up and running, but it is na internationally recognized as the gold standard for job training. 
And the idea is to get jobs, work with employers to get jobs on the table with, with the needed skills for those jobs and a commitment on their part to hire the people who are prepared. Where it's not going to a, a four-year college or going to a community college, it is skills driven. So we're working, we're meeting now with, we have met with construction workers uh, to see what their job skills are needed. We worked, we've met with the healthcare. We had an individual meeting with George Hernandez just last week to see what's needed at um, um, the hospital, um, county, the, our, whatever it's called. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, the, the uh, healthcare, the, the, college, the uh, hospital at the- Uni University hospital. hospital. Here, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my, at, you know, it's old age, I'm sorry. University hospital, and he's willing to work with us some more. And we're, we have to be specific. The city has not yet totally gotten in, but they're coming around. And because we're, we keep, we keep badgering them. And that's what we do. You know, we speak truth to power and they have to put up with us because we're not going away. Uh, so Project Quest is got, got about um, 13, a little bit over 13 million of the, of the money from the uh, $200 million from the bond, from the, uh, tax revenue, uh, sales tax revenue. Um, the uh, SA Works got 100 million and they are, we're not happy with them. Uh, San, uh, Alamo Colleges got uh, 60 million and um, one other uh, kind of a remedial entity got about almost 7 million. And um, that's a lot of money, the whole country is looking at San Antonio and because we have done something that no one has done. And we are, it's training, but it's training for jobs on the table. Uh, we're gonna be working with the elections to get out the vote. We do that. We're working with uh, the police protection, like uh, we uh, were successful to, in uh, getting a substation on the Southeast side of town, St. Margaret Mary Parish, uh, got out the vote in their area and there's a police substation uh, there that they were able to um, to uh, really uh, get out the vote for that. Uh, also, Colotus, they had a terrible curve um, in, in the city of, that was really a death curve and the, the people in Colotus, uh, we got behind with them and uh, they were able to change the 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 construction, I mean, redo it so that the that it's a safe, um, it's a safe safer uh, intersection now. So those are some of the things that we're working on, and uh, they really come up from from our listening sessions. Now, right now, because elections are are you know in the works, and our fiftieth anniversary is coming up. We're, we're the, the key focus, focus or foci for our works are gun violence, housing, jobs and wages, and the elections and our 50th anniversary. It's, we are a, an ecumenical organization. We follow very much um, the synodal process and I invite you to get involved. We can send you materials if you'd like to get involved. So I invite you now for our, um, 50th anniversary celebration, uh, we'll send you an invitation uh, and uh, invite you to come, come to that. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Um, thanks, Sister Jane Ann. I'm gonna step in now and the rest of you will have more time for questions, but I just wanted to make um, a comment. It's marvelous work. I'm so glad your energies are obviously <laughs> really focused on all the great work that COPS Metro can, has been doing. I just want to say one thing to the gun violence. It's just so heartening to see that this will be something that people can individually be involved in. Um, mm -hmm. The gun turn in, that is just amazing. Um, you know, uh, it's it's a brave thing to do, I think, but it's, it's one thing I think that's almost essential, especially where we live. Um, so thanks for that work on gun violence. I'm yeah. going to mention, 
If I could add one thing to that, Anna, it would, uh, Anna, it, uh, that date for turn in is November 19th of this year. Uh, message is going to go out to parishes and everything, and they're going to do a mass. Uh, and, and the purpose of that is it's right before Thanksgiving and, and having the funds, you know, the gift cards to reimburse for the gun or, you know, would help people with their Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, festivities. So that's, that's the date. So absolutely. Well, thanks for adding that. Um, we'll keep that in mind. And just two more quick things before the rest of you um, know have some questions, but we did include in your packet. Um, we usually include several articles that are, you know, at this point relevant to our work, especially um, and it's called Commentary, Texas Lawmakers Fail the Cur Courage Test on Guns. This was about their work on legislation here at the state, the COPS Metro work, uh, again, so needed. Um, and it's just one of those things we just have to keep doing. And then I will say um, something, uh, let Lydia, Lydia Kuykendall speak if she wants to. She, of course, has led... Um, investor work on gun violence uh, that we had her speak uh, a while back. So Lydia, I know you're not uh, prepared for anything, but if you just wanted to say a quick word about uh, our work at ICCR. Yeah, sure. I can do that. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great. So there's, um, thanks, Anna. There's quite a bit um, going on there. The, <laughs> I would say probably most frustrating piece is the the work done directly with uh, firearm manufacturers. So, um, and that's human rights based work. We work with Sturm Ruger and Smith and Wesson, or, or I guess I should say we work against Sturm Ruger and Smith and Wesson, um, trying to get them to commit to and adopt human rights policies and do human rights impact assessments um, throughout their business line. Um, had some really good um, work with other investors on that really good vote results. The companies still have not moved in their opposition to integrating human rights into their business model. Um, we will continue that work. Uh, we have also done uh, started a work stream with payers. So MasterCard, Visa, American Express um, may do a little bit with PayPal and Venmo and some others, but right now it's focused on the credit card companies um, because there is a uh, something, there's something called a, a merchant code and there is now one for firearms. Uh, and th this code is used for pretty much every purchase you make on a, on a credit card. Mm -hmm. And they created one and it has been implemented. The problem is states like Texas and state like Florida are, have introduced legislation to make it illegal to use those codes in those states. Um, they believe it will lead to some kind of registry where you're going to take away everybody's guns. Um, and again, this code is used for literally every other purchase. Uh, it's, it's very common and could, in fact, help track um, uh, fraudulent or stockpiling of, of, of guns. So really troubling purchases over like a pattern over a period of time, um, which they also use, by the way, in um, a lot of sort of child trafficking instances. There's, there's been ways that credit card companies have helped track down um, that type of behavior. And it could be used in a similar way with firearms. Unfortunately, um, because these states, and I think there's seven or eight other states that have introduced that type of legislation to make this code illegal to use, um, the credit card companies have paused implementation of it until that sort of shakes out. So um, a little bit of a holding pattern on that work stream, but we're still pushing them to implement it, um, you know, sort of regardless of how the law shakes out. And they'll have to, as they do with every state-based law, figure out, you know, what states um, it can be used in and what states it can't be. Uh, but that's a, that's that's a probably a quick summary of where we are. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Lydia. Um, uh, before I turn it on over back to, I hope Sister Jane and you can stay a little bit longer for questions, because I know people um, that have joined us um, may have questions for you. Besides, um, in a, in, and I'll, I'll stop my comments in a minute. But just wanted to welcome Sister Letty. Uh, who's here, and and Judy Lackritz, <clears throat> excuse me. Hello, sorry, I'm, it, it was so, a little late, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm glad to have you, thanks. So anyway, back to the questions. Hmm. I have a question for Jane Ann. Uh, you talked about two people after the, after the Jesuit, you mentioned two people 
who were instrumental in getting the cops metro um, going going were they both lay people were they connected yes. to any church they were just church members yes church members so they so it was grassroots yes absolutely grassroots and mm -hmm. Edmundo didn't know either of them and they didn't know him so it was a coming together of like minds and ernie is still at it Yes, he is not here. He's um he's having some surgery, I think. Uh, so anyway, today uh, I think or tomorrow, uh, the IAF organization is in Rome, or twenty members, and they are meeting with Pope Francis this year as well. They met with him last year, and he invited them back. So, and his his assessment of the organization, his comment was, "I have not heard any of you talk about what you read." that is the basis of what you do. It's your conversations with people. It's your interaction, your your dialogue, encounter with people from which you get the, the needs and also the energy. So. Jane Ann, uh, yes. did anybody from San Antonio go to, to Rome yes. with that group? Yes, David Garcia went and uh, Josephine Lopez Paul and so uh, Sonia Rodriguez. Oh, Sonia okay. is, her husband was head of the farm workers, Arturo. Uh, oh, okay. Uh huh. But oh, Sonia. Good. Was, yeah. yeah. I just met her recently. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Jane Ann, I liked what you said about synodal process because, you know, like again, when we talk to people across the country, not all bishops participated in the synod. Not all, you know, bishops had uh, that process, that synodal process in their dioceses. And, you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, you know, it's just hard. I mean, I'm hoping that like in our areas of Texas and beyond that, uh, you know, that something good will come out of that process. And it's the, the fact that you say that this organization is using that process. That's very exciting to me. <laughs> you know, we also um, offered, told the Archbishop we would help in parishes to run some of the listening sessions. And we did. We have. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I'll let you know, I'm Josephine was invited to participate on uh, Thursday afternoon at the at the um, the US a USCCB synodal hear listening session or hearing or whatever mm. and so she couldn't and she asked me if I'm do if I could do it and I am it'll be a two and a half hour meeting and um I'll <laughs> I'll see what I learned <laughs> I'm having to do a lot of reading to get ready for that but I'm doing it so yeah. wow. well, yeah. I have a question um I didn't I didn't get it um uh, clearly like is is it cops metro is is organizing like a guideline and or an outline of what the message could be reproduced um when advocating for better um rules on God or regulations on God uh, ownership? Um actually we could uh get Yes, Rob Miller has some, um, I don't know that you could, yeah, it, we have we have information, they're gonna put it out in parishes. Let me let me ask, send that, to get that from Rob and send it to Anna and you could get it to people that are interested. So yeah. uh, I think yeah. it'd be good to publish if there is already some um, guidelines, some a message uh, that we can publish among our, the, our okay, members. Ministries. Let me do that. Let me, I'll get that. I'll write myself a note, mm -hmm. and ask him to send that. So you, you'd have access to it. Yes. yes. Sure. And certainly send that out with the recording of this meeting. So thank you for that. And, you know, Jane, Ann, I mean, like the governor, is it the governor uh, of New Mexico and what she was saying about, you know, like uh, pausing uh, open carry for 30 days. And now, uh, you know, some of the people in the government are saying that they won't carry it out. I, I heard this one sheriff say that and the attorney general said that. And, and so, you know, it's in the news again, which is good in a way it raises awareness of, you know, someone trying to do something and then what the pushback 
back is. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when, when we were meeting with uh, John Curry yesterday, uh, some of our churches, you know, Rob Miller said, um, you know, he uh, he talked to like the, not all one Catholic church, but not not I won't name it. And, you know, a, a, a Protestant church. Could you do such and such on this Sunday? More just putting the T-shirts out. Well, I don't know if I can do that in my parish. I'm not mm -hmm. sure I can do that. And at least the guys, the pastor is aware of his of his people, and they're not they're just not there, and are they're you know opposed. So that's where we are. But it's going to be a slow process, as you said, Anna. We we just have to keep pushing on it, and uh, mm -hmm. let you, uh, we have to just keep it out mm -hmm. there and keep working on it. Mm -hmm. Raising awareness. So um, I, I had no idea 2,600 people had whose lives had been taken by guns over five years. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question, Sister Jane. You know, for uh, San Antonio Ready to Work, it seems like this project is uh, kind of like... Um, coordinated with the city and also the uh, uh, San Antonio, you know, uh, community college, I would think, you know. So yeah. I'm just, how can, how they relate to each other? Seems like everybody have a different way to do things. I know the one in the city, they have a director, you know, hired it uh, years ago, you know, but I haven't seen the result, you know, well, because... There isn't a lot of result yet because it takes a while to get, you know, COVID got in the way part of it. I, that's mm -hmm. not the excuse. The city, we meet with the city, the city manager, Eric Walsh. Yeah. He gets it, he gets it now. And there's a fellow, they've hired a woman, a, a woman who's going to, who's going to coordinate the uh, work with his court is coordinating work with employers outreach. Uh, Mike Ramsey is the man who is in charge of implementing the program. They're kind of they're kind of at at the general overall level. They've got they've not gotten specific enough. This is a very it's got to be a very specific process that identifies it, you the work the people who enroll in this have to make a commitment to stay in the training process. They will get wraparound services, help with rent, help with books, um, mm -hmm. you know, all of that, childcare, whatever they need, they're gonna or they will get a help with that. And they have to commit to, to the process, in the process, meeting with a case manager weekly. They have to be shepherded through because these are people that don't necessarily have a work history or a, a school or an education history they can be trained for welding you know driving trucks mm -hmm. they can be prepared for anything cnas uh, you know uh, uh, nurses but they have to commit to the process and so it's a there's a lot of hand holding that goes on here yeah yeah and I, I uh, yeah, I kind of understand that, you know, you, you need the people to commit to it. But I just feel like, you know, you have so many organizations trying to get part of the funding. You know, how can they split their function? Well, you know? that's, we're, we're working with that. And we say, don't fund them until the people have a job. In other words, yeah, fund mm -hmm. the, the contractors. Now, okay. Project Quest has has delivered on its commitments yeah. and it's at capacity. The others, it's loosey goosey. We work with, uh, we work uh, very closely with um, Mike Flores, the uh, chancellor yeah. of Alabama yeah. colleges yeah. and mm -hmm. Xavier, um, you know, his uh, kind of a staff person for education. And so we're, we're in the middle of it and we okay. don't, let, we don't let anybody off the hook. Okay. So just, uh, it's it's just a it's going to be a long process, but the money doesn't have to be spent in this four year period, four and a half year period of time. It 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 can be it can be spent for the process 
you know, as it as it rolls out. And yeah. I, we had start slowly and let let there be word of mouth from from uh, successful job job earners. And we said start with twenty dollars an hour. Well, the city wouldn't do that. They said fifteen. We said anybody can get fifteen. You know, McDonald's pays fifteen. Why would anybody do this training for fifteen? But uh, they haven't. They said well. The, the jobs, the people will earn it because of the economic, whatever, we'll see. So it's not an easy process because not everybody wants to work hard. You know? And this is hard work. So we have to build the clientele. We're working on it. Yeah. Well, thank you. And yeah. another thing, uh, just uh, talk about that. You talk about housing repair and the mainland. So now this is one of the major projects uh, from Versailles Housing. You know, yeah. we've been for a long time and uh, I just kind of curious about you know because I just feel like you know they got so many different non-profit you know organizations doing the same thing you know is any way they can combine the effort together make a big funding to do the thing we wanted to instead of giving somebody to lead a thing to do this and you know I mean that's not all my concern it just too many small nonprofit try to get the goal, the same goal like everybody else. And I'm for sure there's a lot of people love, you know, all the organizations to help them to build, you know, repair the house because Merced Housing, we saw a lot of good things coming out from Merced Housing. All the, you know, the uh, the home they repair, I'm really, you know, admire them to do it. So well, they're working, they, they are getting funded too. So from the yeah. city, they're highly respected in the city. Um, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Kristen Davila is on the mayor's commit, uh, one of the commissioners for housing on the mayor's thing. So, you know, it's, it's going well. Yeah. Thank you. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Thanks, Jane Ann. <laughs> Thanks, Jane Ann, for all that work. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. yeah. And your legacy, you've been with it from the very beginning. Oh, wonderful. It's a great overview. Thank you, thank you all for doing the work of Srick because we need you too. Thank you very thank you. Thank you. Warren's thank good you. to see you in that. You, you're good. Thank you very much. Jane Ann, thank you. And continue enjoying your retirement. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I promise. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sign off, folks. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Jane. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye.